Hi, and welcome to A Better Place. Today we will be bringing you yet another special edition on the evangelistic services which will be held by the Methodist Church. Stay tuned, we will be right back. Hi and welcome back to A Better Place. Today we will be joined by none other than Reverend Seaton and Reverend Brooks of the Methodist Church. Reverend Seaton and Reverend Brooks, welcome to A Better Place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Reverend Seaton, let me start by asking you if you can um, explain to us how you got started in Methodism and what exactly is your function right now in the Methodist Church. Thank you and good evening to all of our viewers. Um, to use a popular expression, I was born in the Methodist Church, raised in the Methodist Church, and received my call to be a Methodist minister quite a long time ago. And so here I am. Presently, I'm the superintendent minister of the Methodist Church on the Dutch side of the island. And Reverend Brooks? Yes, well, like my colleague here present, I was born in the Methodist Church. My mother was Methodist, and so I came up through that throughout my younger years. Stayed in it, of course, was confirmed. And then later on received my call to ministry also some um, probably 15 years ago now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so here I am presently. I am the superintendent minister of the French circuit of the Methodist Church. Okay, so before yes. we really start talking about the evangelistic services and what does that mean for Methodism. I want you to tell us a little bit about, um, both of you said that you, you were, this is, was your call, your calling. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for, for many of us, we, we wonder, how do you know that this is what you were called to do? Well, first of all, I think that um, once a person has a relationship with Jesus Christ, that person will always want to know what is God's will for his life. And God has a way of revealing that will, perhaps through scripture, perhaps through experience, perhaps through various means. In any event, that call has to be supported. So it's not just in that person's mind alone. But usually God has a way of confirming that call, perhaps through other persons. And when that is done, that call is tested by the Methodist Church itself. So all Methodist ministers have had to go through a period of testing for at least four to six years before um, being accepted for training. I don't know if that is enough test to a call. <laughs> well, yes, and before we move on to Reverend Brooks, I want to ask you then, when did you receive your calling and when did you start in the ministry? Actually, I received my calling for ministry as early as the precise date was the 16th of February 1975. Because at that particular point, I made a recommitment of my life to Christ. And almost immediately, I knew God was calling me to the full-time ministry of the church. I was told that before, but I fought it every opportunity I got until that time when God's Spirit told me this is what He wanted me to do. And I yielded 
Following that, of course, I went and I spoke with my then superintendent minister, who was the Reverend Joseph Lloyd, now retired and lives in Anguilla. And after um, interviewing me and talking with me for a long time, and he was convinced that I did have a call, we had to go through the normal processes, which means going to my local church, being confirmed by the local church, going to the local preachers meeting, being confirmed by them, going to the circuit quarterly meeting at the time, being confirmed by them, and having gone through all of that, then I started as a local preacher on note, that is assisting full, fully accredited preachers. Then I was placed on trial after satisfactorily fil fulfilling the requirements, and then I did all the exams necessary and became a fully accredited preacher and offered for the ministry. So what age was that exactly? How um, old were you? I was in my 20s then, okay. mid-20s perhaps. Okay. And Reverend Brooks, same question for you. So how did you receive your calling and how old were you when you started in the ministry? I received my call in 1995 and um, that was the year of the famous Hurricane Lewis. Oh. Um, during that same year, I had... Um, I, I, I had my conversion experience as well as my call to ministry. Uh, it was a time of great struggle for, as, we, as it is often said, you have that struggle between your will and what God is calling you to do. And so, um, like the Reverend Seaton, I consulted with my then um, pastor, who was the Reverend Lester Bowers, and um, at a, at, at a given moment in our sharing, he said to me, there is something big. God is calling you to something big. I'm not too sure about what it is, but God is calling you to something. And um, we went through the process that was just um, presented, basically. We went through the process. And um, a long process during which you have time, the time to reflect. You have the time to, you know, to really... Um, ask yourself if this is God calling you or this is simply a fantasy of yours. And um, that's one of the good things about the process. As a matter of fact, it gives you the time to really um, test that call. And um, so we go through that long process. Some persons see it as a tedious process, unnecessary process. But looking back, I think that it's a very important um, part of that, um, of your response to that call. So. That was back in 1995, and since then, well, I went through that entire process, came out of um, seminary about, about um, 11 years ago, and um, here I am. I traveled to a number of islands, um, stationed various islands where you have various experiences. And um, coming back to the call, you, you, you cannot be in ministry unless you have a call. The call is what keeps you in ministry with all the changing scenes of life um, and that call is tested throughout your throughout your ministry throughout your life really yeah well um unfortunately this this segment has gone by so fast <laughs> when we come back i want you to elaborate a little bit more on um, what is methodism and then we will continue talking about evangelistic okay. services stay tuned we will be right back Princess Juliana International Airport, International Airport. PJIA, an ultra-modern airport offering you a warm and efficient welcome from the breathtaking landing to the easy flow of passengers. PJIA has a spacious, clean, and traveler-friendly terminal with great food and excellent duty-free shopping. PJIA, a leader in Caribbean aviation with daily connections to all major Caribbean destinations and major cities within the USA, Canada, Europe, and Latin America. PJIA, your gateway to paradise. Dream and inspire greatness. Hi, I'm Beverly Hyman. Let's all be empowering women. We can do it. Yes. I'm Jacqueline Lewis, 
Love yourself and be phenomenal. Hi, I'm Bradley from Britain. Disease in yourself. Hi, I'm Judith Bell. Be a pioneer. Be innovative. Hi, I'm Anjali Kuhn. Radiate the inside out. My name is DJ Vegas, you don't know who I be. Stand up for whatever you believe in and keep your swag turned up. Hi, I'm Natasha Carthy. Stay in school, get an education. Hi, I'm Phyllis May, and I want to tell everyone to have a positive attitude. Yeah! Hi, I'm Angela Brown, one of the teenagers of today, and respect yourself. I'm Ivy. Be resilient, be strong, be the ever wonderful. Hi, I'm Destiny. Happy International Women's Day and be creative, ladies. Hello, I'm Martha. Enjoy the happiness. Hi, I'm Electra, president of the Electrolyte Foundation. A woman is full circle. Within her, she can nurture, transform, create, and empower mankind. The Electrolyte Foundation, on their wonderful campaign, Pink and Proud, would like to bring about our heritage to life, Waliti, land of many women. In honor of the theme, connecting girls and women, inspiring futures in St. Martin, we as women will continue through our talents, our virtues, and our wonderful intellectual abilities to make this place a wonderful place where we can all live together. Be pink and be proud. I need a favor. I don't have a lock for my bike, and I'm just wondering if maybe you could run into the store and grab me some tampons. Tampons? Are you kidding me? Well, how about you just go in there and I'll just watch your bike? I don't know the first thing about buying that stuff. What stuff? What do you have to get? You can't say tampon? I just won't do it. Even if I was your mother? Even if you was my mother. Can I buy uh, toilet paper? Will that work? No! Ubecotex, a new line of tampons, pads, and liners. Are you looking for that prescription that the doctor just gave to you and you can't find it at no other pharmacy? Well, the Orange Grove Pharmacy is where you should be. The Orange Grove Pharmacy, we carry a wide range of American and European prescriptions and drugstore items. We also do personal care products. We offer friendly services and 24 hours emergency delivery. Charges may apply. We're open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Saturdays, 9 to 1 p.m. Orange Grove Pharmacy, supporting a healthy lifestyle. Hi, and welcome back to A Better Place. Reverend Seaton, we've talked a bit about, you know, you having your calling and, and being a part of the Methodist Church as the Reverend, the Superintendent uh, Minister. Can you tell us a little bit about Methodism and how it started? Methodism is one of those movements, Christian movements, which started a long time ago, way back in England, with... John and Charles Wesley, particularly, these were Anglican priests, very active persons committed to God in the church. But somehow, they had what has come to be called a heartwarming experience when um, they both had this sense of assurance of God's love in their life. And that sense of assurance just changed their whole approach to ministry and to life. These were persons who were set on fire, as it were, for God. And out of that, they were no longer constrained to limit themselves to preaching within the Anglican Church. But as in the case of John Wesley, he preached wherever the Holy Spirit led him in the open air. He died an Anglican priest, but because people responded to his work, he organized them for spiritual growth and, and a nurture into classes. And out of that sprung the Methodist movement. Actually, the word Methodist came from a nickname that both John and Charles and others who were Christians at, at college, Oxford College, received 
because they were methodical in the way they organized their spiritual life for Bible study and prayer on a regular basis. And so they were called Methodists, Bible moths, what is the name Methodist that stuck. And since that time, the Methodist Church really sprung up and through the ministry of John and Charles Wesley and others like them, they saved England from the great, during the great revival. And it just spread like wildfire through America, the Caribbean, and so many parts of the world. Okay. Well, that's a bit of history. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk a bit about the evangelistic services, mm -hmm. as that is your purpose for being here. How did the evangelistic services come about then um, with Methodism? Because I'm sure that this happens across the world as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. But now we're talking about it happening here in St. Martin. Well, these are, these are services that, um, yearly services um, that started quite a, quite a few years ago, probably more than 15 years ago. And um, they are held every year, organized, um, well, since we have two circuits now, yes. they, um, they are organized alternatively by the French side, French circuit, and by the Dutch circuit. This year, um, the Dutch circuit is in charge of um, basically organizing the, these services that will be held um, from Monday, Monday, um, May the 14th, going until Friday, May the 18th. These services will be held nightly. The main objective is to, um, to continue to spread, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to give opportunities to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to challenge persons, of course, to give their lives to Jesus Christ and accept him as their personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. Okay, and Reverend Seaton, um, I am a Methodist as well, so I've been to these services and I know that you have specific nights that are dedicated to a certain group within the church. Okay. So I wanted you to elaborate a bit on those nights and exactly which nights will be dedicated to which group within the church. I am not too sure, generally speaking, that okay. each night will be given to a specific group because these services are not just for Methodists, okay. but therefore all who can come, all are invited. But I know that Friday, the, na the last night, is a special focus on the youth. And it, although it is not youth night per se, that is when we invite all of our children and young people especially to come and know that God is good and God has a plan for their lives. And are they also very um, active within that service? Are they also um, incorporated into the service on that evening? Not specifically. I think the services are geared for all persons, but the, the speaker focuses particularly so on that evening for or toward the young people themselves. Yes. Okay, and you keep talking about speakers, so I'm assuming that I won't see the both of you speaking, or how does that work? Because I, I realize that over the past years that you do have guest persons or guest reverends, preachers coming to speak. Mm -hmm. Is that the norm, and um, are these persons always brought in from abroad, or do you also use pastors from within the Methodist Church on St. Martin as well? Yeah. Okay, usually what we try to do is to bring in persons. The reason, the reason for that is, um, you know, to give, um, to give to person an opportunity to hear it from someone else. We are here on the spot, uh, you know, uh, we are here. And um, they hear from us quite often, or they, they hear the word of God coming through us quite often. So um, we usually get someone to come in can be a Methodist, can be someone from another denomination. A few, about two years ago, we got, um, we got a lady coming out of England, of Caribbean descent, um, who was from a Pentecostal church and did a wonderful job. Um, last year, we had a Methodist minister coming out of Guyana. This year, we have a Methodist minister coming out of Bahamas. Um, and so we give person opportunity to, to hear the word of God coming through someone else. And, um, uh, we remember that that um, we are part of a we are part of a family that is not limited to St. Martin, but a part of a family that is worldwide, basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it reminds us that we are connected. Okay, can you give me a little um, example as to how, what time these events start? Um, is there a particular program that is f that is followed? I mean. 
you know, let's say at 8 o'clock you have uh, the local preacher, or is there a particular program set mm. up for this evening? What is likely to happen is that we want to begin each night at 7 o'clock with praise and worship. And you know, we have the harmonics band that is well known. And we will spend a part of that time really worshiping God in praise and glorifying His name. Then after that, the service starts formally, if you like, with the regular hymn singing, prayer, scripture reading, with testimonies, and then the preacher comes on and brings the word of God to us. And then there is the response to that, to that spoken word. So it normally ends with an opportunity given to persons to respond to the, to the preached word and to what God has been saying to them not just through the preaching, but during the whole services. Because as you're aware, persons are not only always spoken to by the preached word, but also the singing and testimonies and, and, and such like. Well, um, we will have to take a break. And when we come back, we will continue to talk about the evangelistic services. Okay. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Man, I'm supposed to take my girl out to dinner this weekend. I'm so broke, man. Man, I used to have those same problems, you know. But since I got my whip company in your card, when I take my lady out, <laughs> I even get something back, you know. Get something back? But you're a lucky fella? I took your mind out of the gutter, man. What I mean is, with whip company on, I get back 1% on every purchase I make. With this card, I can spend in Gilders and use it throughout the Netherlands and TDs. Instead of paying 1% at the dollar credit card, man, I get 1% back on every purchase I make at the end of the year. What? I gotta get myself a company on card. Man, but let's go. Let me go. Man, now my lady's birthday gonna be a real celebration. <laughs> At least now with Web Compaleon, I know you're gonna get something back. <laughs> <laughs> the Web Compaleon credit card with limits as low as 500 guilders. You don't have to walk with cash and it is accepted by practically all businesses. The Web Compaleon is the first guilder credit card that can be afforded by anyone. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you whether in person, over the phone or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Welcome back to A Better Place. Reverend Seaton and Reverend Brooks, we're coming down to the final segment now of the program, and I would like you to share with us once more um, what the theme is for these evangelistic services and also the time and the location of these services. Thank you very much. Um, the theme, again, is that the earth shall be filled with the glory of God, a call to justice, righteousness, and peace. These services will be held nightly, at the St. John's Estate, also the St. John's Ranch, under the big tent, right at the entrance of, 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 of that estate. And we begin 7 o'clock each night with praise and worship. Okay. And Reverend Brooks, um, what would be your message or what would you like to share with the viewing audience concerning these evangelistic services? Basically, I would like to encourage persons to look at, um, look around and see what is happening with us today, whether in St. Martin or in the rest of the world, and to see that indeed there's a need. There's a need for us to consider other alternatives in life. Um, I truly believe that in certain instances, um, the world has gone crazy, and I, I'm sure that there are a number of persons who are wondering what is next. I would like just, I, I would simply like to remind us that, um, as it is often said, Jesus 
is the answer. Amen. And I would like to encourage persons to come out and hear the word of God on you and, and to really take that step forward to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior as they seek to move forward with life. Yeah. And Reverend Seaton? Well, certainly I do want to endorse that as well. And just to remind persons that the last Saturday, that is Saturday the 12th, we are having a prayer meeting under the tent at St. John's as well from 6 o'clock in the morning right down until 10 o'clock. So persons are encouraged to come and join with us as we pray for God's moving upon the services. We want to welcome all to come, not only to the prayer and fast, but to the services themselves. For those who are not able to come nightly, every night, could come whenever you're able to, because a great blessing awaits you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I know that um, in the past they have been also aired on the radio. Will that be the case yes, this time? definitely. Which radio stations can we listen out to? I know definitely PJD2, but I think that there are others as well. Okay. So once again, before we leave, what are the, the dates and um, the place, the location of these services? Okay, so we are looking at um, Monday, May the 14th, 14th uh -huh. until Friday, May the 18th. Mm -hmm. and that's at the St. John Estate, in Dutch cul-de-sac. The tent will be right at the entrance of the MAC, Methodist Agog Center, Brawler Millard Campus, and um, time 7 p.m. nightly. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for having been a part of A Better Place. As you know, this program is really geared towards family life. And, um, of course, Christianity, once within the family, we know that um, you're not always guaranteed, you know, smooth sailing, but you definitely will be on the right path. So I want to thank you for having shared that information concerning the evangelistic services as well as the information concerning Methodism. Thanks once again. It's a pleasure. Being here. Thank you. And to you, the viewing audience, I would like to thank you for having been a part of A Better Place. Stay tuned for our next program. I am your host, Anjali Krimo.